Hey everybody, welcome to Small Biz Flash, your briefing on small business news, trends, and insights. I'm your host, Adam Hewitt. Thanks for joining me. Ranking high in search engine results, and especially on Google, is a concern of most small businesses. We'll give you some tips and even talk about how ChatGPT can help and hurt on today's show. That's coming up, but first, the news roundup. Though most small business owners are generally positive about the current business environment, they have heartburn over the direction of the economy, according to the third quarter Small Business Checkup Survey released earlier this month by the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Council. 61% of respondents thought conditions will deteriorate for the remainder of 2023. The top five concerns of small business owners were inflation at 57%, economic uncertainty at 32%, recession or economic slowdown at 32%, rising interest rates at 22%, and high gas prices at 21%. A significant percentage of owners, 52%, reported revenues not keeping pace with inflation, and an even larger majority, 59%, said that they are cutting back on spending. The IRS recently announced a moratorium through at least the end of the year on processing new claims for the Employee Retention Credit, a highly popular COVID-era relief program designed to help small businesses keep their employees on payroll. There have been growing concerns inside the tax agency, as well as from tax professionals and media reports, that a substantial share of new ERC claims from the aging program are ineligible and increasingly putting businesses at financial risk by being pressured and scammed by aggressive promoters and marketing. More than 3.6 million claims have been made to date, with a backlog exceeding 600,000 claims. Entrepreneurs who choose to re-enter the traditional workforce are 30% less likely to get a job interview than applicants with only traditional experience, according to research conducted by two professors of management. The longer entrepreneurs were out of the traditional workforce, the worse their chances of getting an interview, suggesting hiring managers may be concerned about entrepreneurs having the skills and experience necessary for traditional jobs. Job seeking entrepreneurs encounter less resistance when seeking roles that neatly fit their past experience, such as developing new business relationships. You can find more information on this and other stories in the news roundup by going to the links in the show notes. Small business owners, you need the pros at SBS Accounting and Advisors to keep your finances on track. For 16 years, the good folks at SBS have been helping owners make better decisions and grow their profits. Go to sbsaccountants.com today to set up a free 30-minute consultation. Use the promo code FLASH to get 20% off your setup fee. Again, that's sbsaccountants.com. So on today's show, we have Mickey Mellon. He is with Green Mellon. It's a digital marketing firm in Marietta, Georgia. So Mickey, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. Thanks. Yeah. So we're yeah, a digital marketing shop in Marietta. We've been around, just turned 14 a couple days ago. Um, we're a team of nine, do lots of WordPress-y kind of things. We you know, manage hundreds of WordPress sites and build WordPress sites and then try to get people to come visit said WordPress sites and buy products from the great people that we built the sites for. So it's a, it's a good time. That's great. 14 years in business is a major accomplishment for anybody. So um, Thank congratulations you. on that. And yeah, so Today, we're going to be talking about um, a topic that I think every small business owner has um, probably laid awake at night at some point worrying over, and that is search engine optimization or SEO. Um, And I was just having a conversation about this, I think, yesterday with one of my clients. And so I'm excited to get into this. And and the, the first question, I think that this kind of just covers probably a lot of bases, but what are 
just the, the fundamental things that a small business needs to do to increase their SEO. And I just want to preface it by saying I've, I've told people before in presentations and just one on one, like if you if somebody comes along and they say, hey, give us a few thousand dollars and we'll move you to the top of the Google rankings and it'll, in a week, you'll be at the very top. I say run as far away as you can in the other <laughs> direction sure. because that is snake oil. So can you kind of elaborate and tell us kind of what the, the truth is? Yeah, the interesting thing with that snake oil, I think I'll hit that real quick, is you rank first for something. There's some long, weird phrase you probably rank first for, and so that's what a lot of those folks do. Like They'll say, hey, look, now you rank first for WordPress agencies in Marietta, Georgia that have two partners behind it, like a big, long phrase, and we're number one. Like That's not really helpful. So that's kind of what they're, they're doing there. But yeah, as a small mm-hmm. business owner, I think three things you can really look at. The first one is don't screw up. I mean, I see a lot of companies that they do silly things, they they break stuff, they don't have the site loading correctly. Just have a site that loads well, is mobile friendly, just kind of works. Like in WordPress, there's a, a button to say, hi, Google, like don't let Google visit my site. And people leave it checked by mistake all the time. And of course, Google no longer looks at your site. So just little things you can mess up, don't mess them up. And that's a pretty good start. The second would be produce great content. I mean, Google looks for fresh content and they look for great content. So just continually write, produce good content, video, text, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every week. I mean, if you publish a blog post a month, you're like in the top 1% right there. So just right. you know, consistent, good content. I mean, we've all been to sites that come see our latest news from 2017. <laughs> how that goes. <laughs> yep. I mean, it doesn't take much to beat that. And then Google Business Profile. I mean, if you're a local business in particular, you know, edit that. It used to be Google My Business, but the Google Business Profile. Just claim that. That's that little sidebar that shows up in Google. And add as much as you can to it. Add your address. Add your hours. Add some pictures. Just kind of add stuff to it and make it your own and encourage reviews to it. And if you can just not screw up, produce good content and then own that profile, you're, you're way up there. Absolutely. And, and just to piggyback on that, as far as the content goes, because I think a lot of times um, people do understand that content is a piece of it, but there's a little bit of confusion about beyond the content, you know, what do I do there? Um, with the advent of Chat GPT and some of these other um, AI tools, um, just a, a word of caution, and maybe you, you have some better advice than me. It can be helpful in generating content, but it only maybe gets you 70 or 80% of the way there. So don't just you know type some, some prompt in Chat GPT and then throw it up on a blog post and, and think that's going to help you. In fact, Google and some of the other search engines know and can penalize you um, if you do that. So, and, and maybe you can speak a little bit more to that. Yeah, I would say for now, you're correct. I think in a few years, you maybe can use it to generate content right. or you'll be good enough. On the other hand, I don't think Google really knows. I mean, even the folks behind ChatGPT got rid of their authentication tool because they can't even tell what's what's real and what's not. But the issue is it tends to be not as good of content. The quality from it is not as good as a human and quality is what matters. And so, yeah, like you said, for now, it's going to get you Along the way, but you still need to tighten it up and make sure it really speaks to what you want. Add internal links to other pages to guide people to resources and make it higher quality content. Because, yeah, even if they don't know it's from ChatGPT, they're going to say, that's just not as good of a post as we're used to from them. So we're not going to rank it. You know, you don't want that. I hope you're enjoying the show and with every episode, gaining new insight to grow your business and run it better. I help small business owners every day succeed with strategy, operations, and marketing. Email me today at adam at smallbizflash.com and tell me about your small business's challenges. Let's grow your business together. That's adam at smallbizflash.com. Now, back to my interview with Mickey. As far as Google goes, because they are kind of the, you know, they're the major player here in the SEO space, um, I know there's a lot of talk about the algorithms that Google uses and, and they're constantly being changed and pe- then people try to kind of game the algorithms. Can you talk about that a little bit and how concerned should um, the folks that, that manage these websites for small businesses be about the algorithms? Yeah, so yeah, Google changes the algorithm hundreds of times a year. And the good news is you should care almost not at all. <laughs> um, I, the way I see it, since Google came around in 1998, they've They've always said, even from day one, don't get shady links from other places. Don't produce bad content. Like, just produce good, honest stuff. And pretty much every update they make is just to reinforce the rules they already had. So I'm excited when they have an update because they found some way to knock a few more spammers off the top and all of our clients move up a few notches. Now, in the 25 years, certainly things have changed. I think there's two big changes that have happened. One is you need an SSL on your site, a secure, you know, the green padlock on your site, which pretty much everyone has now. They've said that. And your site needs to be mobile friendly because neither of those existed in 98. So... If you have the SSL, which you almost certainly do, and if your site's mobile friendly, which most templates and products do that by default pretty well, 
you're in good shape there. And then otherwise, yeah, kind of ignore most of the rest. I mean, it's just saying, oh, don't be cheating this way. Oh, don't be cheating that way. Like, if you don't cheat and, like you said, try to game the system. And people that game the system, that yell the loudest when there's a change because they game the system. And it worked great for the last few years. They were killing it. And Google finally caught them. And now they're mad that Google caught them. And good for the rest of us, though. Absolutely. So how do you know if you're succeeding at SEO? I mean, obviously, you can search for terms and you can see how high up in the rankings um, you show. But are there uh, are there benchmarks or are there other ways that, um, that you can kind of monitor your progress? Yeah, I think the best way, I mean, rankings help. But like we talked about before, you could rank first for things that don't matter at all. So it, right. it's, it's hard to tell there. It's really more a matter of how many people are coming to your site from search. And you can tell with things like Google Analytics, you know, how often people are coming to your site from search and then how long they stick around. Because Again, you can also rank for the wrong thing and get lots of traffic for people that aren't buying your stuff. So if you get 10,000 visitors and they all leave, I'd rather have four visitors that actually stuck around and looked at things. Uh, you can also use tools like Google Search Console, which often gets overlooked. That's kind of Google's other side of the tool where they look at things from their perspective. You know, Analytics is on your site looking from your perspective. Search Console is Google sharing what they see from their perspective. And they can say, hey, we see that this word is coming up in our search a lot, but no one's clicking on it. So maybe you can focus more on that. And it'll kind of give you some good, good tips there. A great thing I love in Search Console is you can see like, huh, here's some keywords where we're ranking like 40th for. If we focused on those, we can move them up. And it's way easier to move up from 40th than it is for a brand new term that you're not ranking for at all. So Search Console is free, a little complicated if you've not used it before, but it's free and you can poke around and get some great insights out of there too. Yeah, no, that's that's great advice. And we're going to have a link to uh, Google Search Console in the show notes. And I think that's one of those that a lot of folks don't know about. So I appreciate you uh, mentioning that and kind of educating us a little bit on that tool. Yeah, for sure. So, Mickey, thank you so much. We really appreciate this. And, you know, this is just, again, a topic that a lot of people think about, and there's a lot of misinformation out there about um, SEO. So thanks for setting us straight, and we really appreciate your time. And we're going to have, by the way, um, Mickey's information um, in the show notes as well. So uh, I encourage you to get in touch with him and his agency if you have any digital marketing needs. That's the show for this week. Please tell someone about the podcast and a comment on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube would be great as well. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.